Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new scientific study that may have uncovered a little bit more truth about the creation of the moon when approximately 4.5 billion years ago our planet Earth received a collision from an object known as Theia. Today we'll talk about what is it that we've found very recently and why it may finally solve the question of how moon was formed and why it's so similar to our planet Earth. Welcome to What The Math. So one of the biggest mysteries in terms of the creation of the moon and why it's possibly a mystery is that, well, first of all, our moon is tremendously large for a moon. Most moons out there in the solar system are very, very small. Ours is ridiculously big. And not just big, but there's something else very unusual about our moon. And that something is the fact that the composition of our moon is exceptionally similar to Earth, to our own planet. The fact that when we return the rocks during the Apollo missions indicated that the moon rocks are very, very similar to Earth rocks actually created more problems than solutions. Because of this, we didn't really know how to explain the creation of the moon. Now, the modern interpretation of this creation story is that once upon a time, approximately four and a half billion years ago, when Earth actually didn't look like this at all, I should probably change this, but let's just go with that for now, just so you know that it's Earth, received a collision from an object known as Theia that collided with Earth in such a way that, well, first of all, it generated a huge explosion and a tremendous amount of debris that was released um, into the lower and higher orbit of our planet. And following this, following the collision, it eventually resulted in the creation of new Earth, I guess you can call it Earth 2.0, and of course our planet's main um, satellite, the Moon. But unfortunately, this is a very simplified version of the story because no matter how we look at this, some things don't seem to add up. So, for example, um, let's go back for a second. Let's go to the pre-collision Earth. This time procedurally generated because we don't really know what it looked like back then. So, if this was a direct collision like you see right here, the thing is, the created moon would not have an orbit that it has today. It would most likely have a much lower orbit. And let's actually try to simulate this again. Um, or, potentially, would release all of this material that would just fly away. So direct collision doesn't seem to explain what happened. So for the longest time, the scientists believed that it wasn't really direct collision. It was most likely a kind of a swipe, side swipe. In other words, it looked something like this. They most likely passed by the side of the planet Earth and a lot of the material was released into the orbit and then all of this stuff eventually solidified and uh, first assumed the lower orbit and eventually moved to the orbit where the moon is today. But this explanation has a problem. If this was a side swipe, all of this material that you see here that most likely formed the moon would have different composition. It wouldn't really be similar to planet Earth unless for some unknown reason these two planets were identical. And that's very unlikely. If these two planets that collided with each other were somewhat different in composition, then the moon stuff would also be different in composition. But as we know from the Apollo rocks that were returned to Earth decades ago, that's not the case. The rocks are very, very similar. So something else may have happened here. The collision with Theia was probably very different. And the new research that was recently posted in Nature by uh, Natsuki Hosono and the team known as Terrestrial Magma Ocean Origin of the Moon, explains this really well. And obviously they discovered this by running a lot of simulations, the results of which you can find in the paper. So what exactly did they discover? Well, after running lots and lots of simulations, they found that you could actually create the moon that you see right here with the composition similar to planet Earth and in the location where we find it today by doing the following by starting with the Earth that was not solid. The Earth that was originally filled with a lot of magma oceans on the surface. Kind of like what you see right here on the screen. Maybe not as hot actually. So let's cool it down a little bit. So if you were to start with Earth that was basically this, a molten lava bowl, 
and were to collide with an object that was molten, that essentially had the liquid surface, a lot more of Earth material would then be released into space as opposed to the material from Theia, and this would result in the production of the Moon that's very similar to what we're observing. In other words, for us to be able to recreate this model that we have today with Earth in the center and our beautiful Moon orbiting around it in the location where it is today and with the composition that we see, this could potentially work. If originally Earth was full of molten oceans and all of these oceans were displaced and released into the outer space from the collision with Theia, this could potentially create the Moon we see today. This would potentially create the Moon in this location. In other words, the original collision had to be with an object that was relatively liquidy. So maybe, just maybe, this is the explanation for how our Moon was created. You know, it's been decades since we've originally proposed the idea, but it was always a little bit tricky to explain every single detail. And right now, the Molten Earth Theia Collision Theory probably has the best explanation given to us. And there's one more thing that potentially gives this theory a lot more credibility. The Moon's surface is very similar to Earth's surface, but there's one major component that's different. Moon's surface is enriched in what's known as ferrum oxide, basically iron oxide. And it wasn't really easy to explain this until now. It just so happens that there's another thing that's very rich in iron oxide on Earth. You may have guessed what it is. It's magma. The stuff that's coming from inside our planet is usually enriched in iron oxide. And if this stuff is released into space and then creates an object, this would be very similar in composition to our moon. And so this makes a lot of sense. If our Earth looked like this in the beginning and then received a direct collision from another object that released a lot of that magma into outer space, this would totally create an object like the moon. And so for now, I would have to say that this theory is probably the best one we have so far. No other theory explains everything, including iron oxide so well. And no other theory explains all of these details that we couldn't explain well before. I think for now we can actually put an end to this debate on how the moon was created because I think the Japanese team from Japan's Agency for Marine Earth Sciences and Technology have found a pretty good solution and pretty good explanation to what happened four and a half billion years ago. And if you'd like to learn the details, check out the paper in the description below. But on that note, I'm going to leave you with the image of primordial Earth as it was approximately four and a half billion years ago, right before the collision with Theia. And this, of course, also answers the question of whether there was liquid water on Earth before the collision. The answer to which would probably be no. If it was all molten and hot, there wouldn't really be any surface to have liquid water on. So if this was the original Earth, then Earth after the collision was slightly better for everything and everyone, including, of course, life. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about space and sciences, make sure to subscribe to this channel and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.